بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على النبي محمد Welcome back and tonight inshallah ta'ala we are going to focus on the second chapter which is Surah Al-Baqarah So this chapter is the longest of them in the Quran it has 286 verses and we're told ma'na ismiha al-Baqarah the, the, the meaning behind its name which is the cow uh, the heifer, right? Min asnafi bahimatil an'am that it is from among the different um, cattle, pardon me, the different livestock that are present or that uh, Allah Ta'ala has created. Wahiya al ibulu wal baqar wal ghanam. And the three main categories for livestock, from our perspective, that is at least, is the camel family, the cow family, and the sheep family. Wa sababu tasmiyatiha. The reason why it's named the cow, in firadu surati bidikri qissati bakarati bani Israel, we're told that first it's because of uh, the story that took place with regards to the cow and the children of Israel. And uh, those who, who will read the Quran and during Ramadan will listen to it, the story of them being commanded to slaughter the cow and they went ahead and asked what type of cow, what color cow, and you know, we still need more clarity, etc. But this story <coughs> is only mentioned within this chapter. We're told what the Lalat also, what the Lalat to had al ismi al al maqsadi al am, li surati wa mawdu'atiha. And how this chapter basically, or the cow, is kind of a, uh, how do we say, the name of it is something that is basically a general objective that is going to focus on some of the other things that are happening within the chapter. Uh, that are connected to it. So we'll come to see that there's other references with regards to the cow and things of that sort. So because it's a peculiar name and a peculiar story that's that's unique in that sense, it has taken on that name. What other names does it have? From the other names is that it is referred to as, of course, as shuhidat bi surat al-Baqarah, it's known as al-Baqarah, wa tulaqabu bi sanam al-Qur'an, that it is also uh, known as being basically the uh, the hump, the highest point of the Qur'an. So the sinam of, of, the, of the camel is basically the hump of it. So it is basically like the highest point of the Qur'an and perhaps because it is the largest uh, chapter of the whole Qur'an, right? It is also known as Fustat al-Qur'an and that's basically a, a very large tent, like a huge pavilion. So this is another name that it's referred to as, as well as as zahra as zahra Now, as zahra in the, in the Arabic is referring to that which is light, and it is a beautiful manifestation of light. So this chapter is basically as zahra being this beautiful emanating light. Maqsadu al-am, what is the general objective of this chapter? Istija'a'l-istija'batu li amri lahi ta'ala wa limtithalu al-kamili lahu. It is to respond to Allah Ta'ala's commands and to apply them, to, to emulate them, to live by them in as complete and as beautiful a way as possible. Sababu nuzuliha, the reason it was revealed. We're told that it is Suratun Madaniya, that it is a Medinan chapter. وَلَمْ يُنْقَلْ سَبَبٌ لِنُزُولِهَا جُمْلَةً wahida. And we're not told of anything legit that mentions why it would have been revealed all at once. وَلَكِنْ صَحَّ لِبَعْضِ آيَاتِهَا سَبَبُ نُزُولٍ But we do know for certain verses of it why they were specifically revealed. And we're not going to get into that here because that's going to be way too long of a, of a, of a, uh, a topic itself. فَضْلُهَا It's virtues. There are many, four of them. The first is بَرَكَةٌ عَجِيبَةٌ لِقَارِئِهَا That for the person who reads it, that there's amazing blessings. How's that? It is a hadith that Imam Muslim collects, wherein the Messenger Ali والسلام, said, Iqra'u al-Baqarah. He said, read al-Baqarah. فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهَا baraka," Because being able to take it, to seize it, is a blessing. وَتَرْكَهَا hasra," And to abstain from reading it is a tremendous loss. It is a, a sense of despair. The second, عِلَاجٌ مِنَ السِّحْرِ وَالْعَيْنِ وَالْحَسَدِ 
that it is a medicine that cures and heals against anything and everything of magic, the evil eye, and of envy. And this hadith is also collected by Imam Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُهَا الْبَطَلَةَ أَيْ السَّحَرَةَ He said that the magicians, these evil people, that they cannot overcome it. They have no power over it. That they can do nothing against it. The third, طَارِدَةٌ لِلشَّيَاطِينَ That it will expel uh, 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 demons. قَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَإِنَّ الْبَيْتَ الَّذِي تُقْرَأُ فِيهِ سُورَةُ الْبَقَرَةِ لَا يَدْخُلُهُ شَيْطَانِ He said, certainly in that house where Surah Al-Baqarah is, re- is read, is recited, shaitan will not enter it, nor will any shayateen, any demons enter it. And that hadith is also in Muslim. The fourth virtue, هِيَ مِنَ السَّبَعِ That it is from among those first seven chapters of the Qur'an, which have a very special place. And the hadith is collected by Imam Ahmad, and it is considered hasan. The Messenger والسلام, said, مَنْ أَخَذَ السَّبْعَ الْأَوَلِ الْأُوَلِ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ حَبْرٌ أي عالم. That whoever is able to memorize, to learn the first seven chapters of the Qur'an, that person is a scholar. Eighth and final point is with regards to the context of it and the reflection of what comes bef- the first verse and the, and the last, or the beginning and the end. فَمُنَاسَبَةُ أَوْلِ الصُّورَةِ بِآخِرِهَا The relationship between the beginning and end of the, of the chapter is such. الْحَادِيثُ عَنْ صِفَاتِ الْمُتَّقِينَ That it all goes back to the descriptions of the righteous. فَقَالَ سُبْحَانُهُ تَعَلَى فِي فَاتِحَتِهَا أَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Allah Ta'ala began the chapter telling us about the believers. Among the things He said is that they are the ones who believe in the unseen. وَقَالَ فِي خَاتِمَتِهَا And He said in the end of the chapter, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ That Allah's Messenger believes in all that was sent down to Him from His Master as well as all the believers also believing. So in both of these cases, we are told about the descriptions of the believers. What else? We're told, مُنَاسَبَةَ سُورَةِ الْبَقَرَةِ لِمَا قَبْلَهَا مِنْ سُورَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ What is the connection, the relationship between Al-Baqarah and Al-Fatiha? لَمَّا قَالَ الْعَبْدُ فِي خِتَامِ الْفَاتِحَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ we're told that when Allah tells us that the believer, the worshipper, concludes Surah Al-Fatiha with the dua saying, guide us to the path of uprightness, to the path of righteousness, قِيلَ لَهُ فِي فَاتِحَةِ الْبَقَرَةِ That Allah in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, He tells him, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ هُوَ مَطْلُبُكَ وَفِيهِ حَاجَتُكَ that Allah answers that dua of Al-Fatiha by telling the believer, this is the book that has no doubts in it. It is guidance for the righteous. Therefore, all that you're asking for, all of your needs are in this book. And subhanAllah, through that we see how the Al-Fatiha leads into Al-Baqarah and what the connection is. So subhanAllah, how even though they are separate chapters, we will come to see as we proceed the interconnectedness uh, of, these, of these chapters with each other. For subhanAllah, the one who is the author of the Qur'an, his divine speech, there is none like it. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, awwalan wa akhiran. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.